Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic topology, the last video on this playlist, which is topology in data analysis. So I would like to explain a very, very nice application of topology in real life. So homology is so great. I hope I convinced you uh, if you were following me throughout the videos. Uh, thank you very much, by the way, for watching. Uh, but if you were following me, uh, obviously I'm a fanboy of homology. And it's so great, I would like to explain a really, really beautiful um, uh, incarnation of topology in real life. Whatever real life means, we will see that. So I stole this idea from a very nice, nice blog uh, linked in the description by someone actually who works in the in in industry and uses this, this really in practice, which is really beautiful, very readable. And um, I stole it, as I said. So everything here is based on basically this blog post, which you really should check out. Anyway, so the title is What is Persistent Homology? So what is this type of homology? And as you can see, there's the word homology involved. Yeah, so there will be homology. Uh, so let's have a look at the main idea. So kind of I would I will run a mathematical demonstration in a second, uh, but what I would kind of would have in mind is that there's a set of points somewhere and you kind of grow disks around those points. And while growing disks, you uh, construct a certain simplicial complex and you compute homology of the simplicial complex. I will see that in the mathematical code in a second. And kind of the, the idea here, the idea underlying this whole topological data analysis, or at least this flavor of topological data analysis, would be this idea that you have something that you vary somehow continuously and somehow how do we observe at what scale do you observe change in a certain type of data right we're really talking about kind of real world data here um i kind of there's many different flavors obviously in uh this video i would like to restrict to this to this kind of data being kind of discrete points in rn you will see that in many illustrations but first let's have a look at this mathematical illustration so here's mathematica and there are three sliders here so i have a discrete parameter i have a, a distance parameter uh, which is kind of this growing balls you will see that in animations later uh, a little bit more in detail and as uh, as those grow balls grow you will connect points if they end up in the same ball we'll see that so you can num number the very very the number of points um, I won't do that. And you have a random seed. It's kind of the kind of the starting of this whole. Um, uh, there should be some random number involved, and you just a starting seed of the whole process. So you kind of you should think of this as having some random points spread somewhere, and this program will compute uh, the homologies. It's a little bit silly. It won't compute really the H two because everything is planar in this case. So H two will be a little bit boring. But you can imagine that this ha is happening in, in R3 or in even higher dimensional spaces. We would be able to compute uh, higher dimensional um, groups as well, if you in practice. So, um, and this is how it works. So let's get the parameter down to zero. So as soon as the parameter is down at zero, each point is a universe on itself because it's kind of I will grow balls of, of certain size around those points. You will see that in animations later, as I said. And as soon as the balls, uh, the balls co coincide or collide, you actually draw, um, you, you connect them into a simplicial complex. And of course, if uh, there are no balls and every point is just the universe for itself. And in this case, uh, apparently there are 24 of these points. So each one is just, well, a universe on itself, as I said. So H0 is 24. And kind of the idea is then now you would like to see kind of the structure of this a set of points. So this, this is kind of some data you've collected and you increase successively the radius. And as the radius gets a little bit bigger, some of them get connected. And as you can see, this will drop down um, the homology because this is now one connected component. For example, this is a connected component and you keep on increasing here, more things get connected. Uh, those things drop down uh, as you can see more things get connected and you might end up with a circle at one point. Oh, there's a circle as you can see. And now yes, there was a circle was born. So we get another generator here, you increase and increase and increase and you see how it varies. There's another circle. Oh, this is a beautiful example. Now you have two circles at around this parameter. And of course, if you just put it all the way back then it's just a filled complex and it's boring again. So what I would like to do 
or what people do here is they kind of you kind of think of this power meter increasing, increasing, and you will see changes in homology. And you kind of record those changes in homology, and this should tell you something about the, the kind of the geometry behind uh, the cloud of points, the cloud of data, data that you have collected. Okay, that's kind of the main idea here. I will have more animations later. Just in the later animations, there will be the, I will show the balls, or the animations show the balls, but they won't connect um, the complex anymore. So like, like the Mathematica demonstration did, just keep that in mind. You will do that, and but anyway, um, you will understand what's going on as soon as you see it. So the zeros persistent homology, so here's already the picture. We'll see that in an animation in a second. Uh, kind of, you have those points somewhere, you grow those balls, and you record in a nice diagram, which is called the persistence diagram, which I will explain uh, in a second, a kind of every time something is born and how long it survives until it's killed. Uh, so, uh, so there will be a birth, this is this line, and there will be a death, this is this line, and um, you kind of want to record in this diagram when something is born, like you connect something in the complex, like the circle was born before, and at one point it will die because everything is just connected, everything will just cluster, and you just um, kind of uh, want to measure how long it will survive. So the interesting uh, point here is the difference between the point, so this point, we'll see that in an animation in a second, so it's distance from the x equals y, uh, axis. So kind of these diagrams, I will have more uh, examples later, are kind of uh, designed such that at x equals y everything is born. So if, let's say I would I would uh, be born, something would have been born by by uh, having a parameter uh, one, so the, the radius of the circle is one, and then I would put a point here basically, and I would keep going until the point is destroyed, and then I would put, put a point here. We'll see that in a second. Um, in particular for the one dimensional, it's much nicer to see. And because here kind of everything is born at step zero, right? So you can't destroy connected components and you, you can't create new connected components. You can only, only destroy them. So everything is kind of concentrated on this line here. Um, but before I continue waffling, let me just show you the animation. So here's the animation and you have start with some points. You grow the circles. As you can see, the radius increases. And at some points, the circles will collide. Um, and this is where you kind of mark the generators and the homology will die. And this is where you will mark it on this diagram. And that, now the last component would die. So in this case, I would connect everything now into a big complex, right? So you have a lot of points. Each of one of them is a single generator and homology. You grow the circles around your points. They will collide at one point. You would connect them. Uh, compute the corresponding homology, there will be fewer generators, you mark that on this diagram, and you just keep on going. Might be pretty simple idea. Just grow balls and see whenever they collide and connect things according to the balls. And so this should measure kind of how connected components change uh, as you go along in, well, in the data as you increase your, um, your radius around the points. Kind of the same for the first homology. For the first homology, it will measure how internal circles appear and change. I will show you the animation instead of waffling, and then everything kind of will be clear anyway. So here's the animation. It's kind of the same idea. You have a set of points. You have a grown radius, and basically can't quite see it, but there are some small circles involved which die very very soon, and then there's a bigger outside circle which takes a while before it dies. So now it's dead and you record its, its death here on this line. And it's created roughly in this step. So it will be roughly about uh, around here when, it, when it's going to die. So the circle is still there, the circle is still there. Maybe it's roughly more like here and now it's dead, so you record it. So this kind of should tell you or will tell you the diagram itself how circles change in your data, right? This should tell you something about the overall shape of your data. Really the same idea. You have this uh, cloud of points and, and you, you do it at the same time, of course. You would record zero and one at the same time um, and you would draw them in this diagram and show you more nice diagrams in a second. So like here, uh, very early on in this picture, a lot of kind of small circles are born. 
something like here is a small circle that will be born relatively soon and will get will die relatively soon. Here's a little one, here's a little one, and so on. And then the big circle, kind of the bigger thing, it will take a while until it dies. I should have used a different color. Give me another try. So the bigger circle here will die a little bit later, and that's why. But it will be created very early on as well and will die very late. So it has a kind of a huge distance uh, from the x equals y. So this is x equals y, y equals x, whatever axis. So kind of the distance of a point between the x equals y distance uh, is kind of how, how long it will survive in a wallet. And again, the same idea, you kind of want to measure how internal uh, circles in your data changes as, as soon as you increase the number of volts. Um, and here's the formal definition. I don't want to go into the formal definition too much, but of course there's a formal definition uh, which you can read if you want or go to the Wikipedia page. Let me just explain this persistence diagrams a little bit more carefully because I got a little bit confused when I first saw them. So this is really how it works. So let's say you have, um, so usually they're distinguished by colors. So you would choose different colors for the different homologies to make it kind of easier to see. As I said, you would put everything maybe in one diagram. Maybe you want to only put one of them or two of them or whatever. So in this example, I have, um, let's say a, 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 a H2 homology, which is red. And I have an H1 homology, which is blue. And this is how it works. So um, let's say you have some point A that is born very early on. So roughly um, about 0 0.5 and it won't survive very long. Right, it, it just, it's just born and basically is already dead. So when you would you put it on this diagram, you would go to 0 0.5 and put it very, very mildly, a little bit be, 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 uh, above the x equals y axis. So roughly about whatever it is, 0 0.51. And it will do the same with all the others. So here, B is roughly born at 0 0.75. So you put it at 0 0.75, roughly here, and it survives a bit longer. So it's a bit, little bit further away from um, from the x equals y axis. Uh, same for C. C is somewhere around here. So it's born somewhere around here. It survives quite a bit. Um, and D is born very late and it survives a really long time. So um, it, it will be just very high above the x equals y axis, right? So I will just put uh, it somewhere here and just move it along. Uh, the corresponding distance, how long it survives. And you kind of, in this diagram, the further something is to the top, the longer it survives in homology. So this diagram kind of tells you have the internal structure of uh, your set of data. And to give you a real world example, um, here's something you, people really did in the real world. So this looks very, very clustered. So if you st study something that's huge, of course, um, then you have so many points and it looks already like a cloud. But you can kind of see kind of a little bit of the differences. So this is just the 1D homology, whatever. It's a 1D homology of, uh, uh, of those guys here, which is kind of a very surprising real world application. So the idea here is that you have those brain arterial trees. So the, uh, kind of the blood flow in your brain. And you would kind of like to see whether there are some differences between age groups. So what they did is they had a certain age cutoff and that is above age cutoff and the below age cutoff. So the, and the old people and the young people, they separated them in two different groups and they looked at the persistent or the top at the shape structure of the brain, basically. Kind of a fun idea. And they made those diagrams exactly in the correct way. So they kind of rendered those, those things into point clouds and then used this persistent homology to kind of measure kind of how connected it is in some sense. And certainly for those trees, so for those blood trees, blood flow trees, if you want, kind of the, the, the circle should be the most important one. So they kind of focused on the one dimensional case anyway. And this is how it looks like. And this is what you could expect. So I just took this kind of out of random because it was, I discussed in the blog that I mentioned. Uh, there are several other examples, which kind of looks the same. And as you can see, there's a slight difference. It's a, it's a mild difference between the two pictures. So between the below age group and the above age group. So here you have a lot of kind of death very early on. So most things kind of concentrate in this area here roughly. So maybe in this area, so a lot of death very, very early on. 
So not many huge circles if you want. And this looks a little bit different. So it's a little bit thicker, as you can see. Maybe it's more like this. So circles survive a little bit longer in persistent homology. So there's a difference in the brain that you can measure using persistent homology, which I find very, very exciting, surprising, beautiful, amazing. Papers linked in the description. Of course, you should be careful now to make any interpretations here. So those differences are really relatively subtle, like almost everything you, you ever measure in the human brain it will be relatively subtle. There will be differences, whatever, depending on whatever, and they will be really, really subtle. So here's one that is rena related to H. But you can see the difference, like circles survive a little bit longer. Circles in those brain flow, uh, blood flow in the brain will survive a little bit longer if you're younger. And they will die a little bit earlier if you're older. Um, as I, I said again, because it's important, no implication or there, there's no interpretation known, I think, what this can, will cause or whatever. You can just measure the difference and you measure the difference using topology, using homology, which is awesome as hell. It's awesome as fuck, isn't it? A real life example. This might be helpful in the end to understand whatever some uh, brain diseases in old ages, because maybe you can measure differences um, using persistent homology. An amazing strategy, beautiful. Um, anyway, so this was my um, series on what is algebraic topology. Thank you for following me. I hope you liked this uh, last example of this amazing applications of homology, of a variant of homology, obviously, persistent homology uh, in, in real life, whatever you call real life, let's say in the sciences. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the series itself. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time, maybe for a different series.